Now let's move into some further self-reflection questions. Ask yourself what lesson you're meant to learn and find gratitude for the learning. This will help neutralize the charge so you can dissolve it and won't repeat a reaction cycle. Ask yourself, according to this new awareness, by consciously implementing this new wisdom, where are you now ready to upgrade to a better story or better reality? Gratitude is a signature step to manifestation because the mind accepts the emotional process and outcome as complete and accomplished, just as it would any time we naturally express thanks for something we feel fortunate for receiving. This way, we ensure that we are inviting the fortunate experience in by expressing gratitude first and aligning to the outcome we want to manifest more quickly and effectively, not the other way around. Just as we would tip in advance to ensure a good experience, the principle is the same. Life has a grand design. Everything happens for a reason. Every person is either a teacher or shapeshifter. We can learn something from everyone, even if it's what not to do. Most importantly, those you have, resist, have resistance toward are teaching you the most valuable learning opportunity toward higher self-love. They give you something to fight for. It is a choice to be better or bitter, and these are simple exercises to continue the path toward betterment and personal advancement. So back to some self-analyses to help evaluate your growth. Ask yourself in what areas are you still creating recurring cycles? Financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, or in any other personal areas? Are you feeling disrespected or appreciated by another individual? Is this duality still showing up in your life? And if so, where? Are you able to also see where the learning opportunity is presenting itself? Whether it's love or respect, is there more areas where you're withholding forgiveness, love, or respect from either of those you feel you're lacking it from, or where you're also withholding this particular desire, feeling that you're feeling devoid from yourself? Have you been withholding love and respect from yourself in this particular area? And is that why it may be reflected from others? So for example, if you're not feeling respected from others, are you also showing respect to them or most importantly for yourself? Are you compromising your needs, your own personal needs or worth for another or for something else? And you can't receive respect or what you seek from others, what you're not first giving yourself. This is always the inside job because answers and solutions are never outside of us. We create them internally. Therefore, they must come from within before they can be externalized or mirrored without. So let's start formulating and setting a new intention. The reason affirmations have received so much public attention is because there is a science to putting your mind on the focused intention of what you desire. And once you have a, you're clear on what you desire, this activates the prefrontal cortex by stimulating the creative mind and rewiring the neural pathways of the brain synapses. This will fire the correct neurochemicals to recode successful brain chemistry. You may create declarations or affirm your desires. Either way, have a daily mantra or practice rituals by putting attention into what you desire. So here is the formula. First and foremost, these are the rules to a successful execution. One, be sure that it is positive and in the present tense. Two, you will always get out of it what you always put into it. And three, these are the laws of nature. That which we sow shall we also reap. By creating an affirmation using auto suggestion techniques and begin by prefacing with one or more of the following. For example, I choose to love and respect myself and the individual I have been desiring love and respect in return. I will do this by initiating action through a gesture, conversation, letter, or action of some kind. How can you first be the change you wish to see? Please provide an example. This is how you grow and become self-actualized. Become the person you want to see from others and treat yourself the way you want others to treat you. Therefore, you will treat others the way you also want to be treated. We've all heard that we must be first, then do, then have, not the other way around. So what is your desired outcome with this person or particular circumstance? Now choose 
what new desired result you are creating with whichever of the following resonates and feels most applicable. Be sure to list your highest choice, not coming from a conflicted or limiting belief. What do you need to let go of in order to allow your goal to be materialized? It's a bonus if you complete each of these. Here are some examples to get your new affirmation, some momentum and forward motion. I feel excited to be my best self. I am my best version of myself now. I'm excited to become the best version of myself. I'm aligning to all I need to create the life that I want. I am calling in support in such and such area. I am in alignment to my ideal reality now. I am living my ideal life now. I choose to be supported in my dreams and goals. I powerfully choose to give my per myself permission to be successful. Choose what works and resonates for you as it will be more effective in and on your own terms. Now check in and see how you feel. Feelings are always our compass to our guidance system. The solutions that are engendered from the heart are more accurately calculated than the logic of our rational minds. It's when we combine the heart-mind connection, we enhance the winning pair. If you've shifted your vibrational frequency, then you have succeeded. As you are logically and analytically processing your feelings, you begin combining your heart-mind connection and will always come out with a higher solution that may have originally been off your radar. So if you do happen to have a conflicting belief or limited belief, understand that you need to begin to analyze and process your feelings. And this can also be effectively achieved through meditation and exploring your feelings on a deeper level. Embrace this natural process. Don't run from it because everything in life is happening for a reason to grow you, better you, or place you on a higher path. Essentially, all is happening for you, not to you. Thank the source for hardships that have taught you the discovery of who you are and meant to be, directing you to your greatest good allowing all things to serve your highest will if you choose to perceive it from this understanding, which is key. Not all storms are coming to disrupt your path because more often than not, they're actually coming to clear it or giving you the opportunity to face it and master it. This is how life unfolds for all humanity. The more you can view your life from this perspective, again, the sooner you will feel more gratitude and begin creating more positive experiences. Expressing appreciation is also embodying feelings of love and gratitude. This is why whenever we can look back to what we have overcome, we can experience appreciation and it will couple both love and gratitude. This releases the feel good neurochemicals in the brain, rewiring the subconscious programming. Living with higher emotions in our hearts is a taste of heaven. Frequently express your love, gratitude, and appreciation to those who mean the most to you, especially those who are often taken for granted. Gratitude is the magical alchemy in our lives. A grateful heart comes through witnessing the good in all things with an attitude of gratitude by expressing gratitude to all of those around us who bring goodness into our lives. The more you can view your life from this perspective, the sooner you will begin to feel more gratitude in in your heart and begin creating the more positive experiences each and every day as a habit. Here's another exercise to combat self-sabotage as a bonus. Again, you will get out of it what you put into it. So ask yourself a series of very important questions to align to your authentic self and purpose. What would you have to give up or lose that you value for what you desire? Are you overvaluing what you would have to give up, making room for another dream to manifest? And which desire is greater or more important from a grand perspective? The value of what you would have to give up or making way for a new desire to be possible? An example may be overvaluing eating favorite foods and sweets instead of losing weight that may be desired and not being willing to give up those favorite foods. This is how we unconsciously self-sabotage and will help you consciously weigh the cost and payoff of what you're getting and what you're not getting by this common internal conflict and sabotage. Choosing to get out of your own way for the success you want. How much better would you feel about yourself? 
here's a three step internal exercise. List three action steps you can take to create your desire. For example, if your desire is to create more money or financial freedom, what steps will you take to actionize each of your items? Find ways to connect to your higher self and what the best version looks like to you. You can use affirmations, write it out and list why you are grateful for each. Example, I am ready to align to more money by providing more value. Or improve your internal association with money if necessary by stating, I'm grateful for money because it enables me to have more financial freedom and time with children, spouse, etc. I am confident and successful with anything I do and believe in myself. I am fulfilling my highest potential. The three steps I will take include one, increasing potential income. I will take courage to apply for a higher position or a better business position aligned to my desire to ensure I will thrive or take up an additional part-time job. I will prioritize my business time and work smarter, not harder. I will create a budget and financial plan or hire a financial planner. Now answer the following or finish the following statement. Who would I be if? If you achieved a specific goal, who would you be? Or how would you feel if your goal was met or achieved? What would your life be like or how would it be better? Write it and feel it. This helps create it. This helps us to identify your why and what you value to give you your self-actualized profound purpose. If it's freedom that you desire, this will be your formula for your success. This process helps stimulate the neurochemical production of serotonin and dopamine in the release of these positive endorphins. Rewire the brain for success and let your feelings do the work for you. This is alignment work. Whatever conflict you're faced with, or if you're feeling triggered by any hot buttons, remember to ask yourself these three questions. If you need to recenter yourself first, take a few deep breaths, completely center by clearing and calming your mind, then ask yourself the following. What am I feeling? What do I want to feel instead? Or what is this experience teaching me? Write down your desires and communicate them with someone as it adds more power to your word because your words scientifically create your reality. Applying pen to paper helps to increase the development of not only new neural pathways in the brain, particularly when we are writing a list of positive ideas for more than three to four minutes. It also shifts the focus and creates new pathways of solutions and perceptual changes. Adopting new positive behaviors helps to constitute a new value system, a better framework in your thinking and behavior upgrade. Our values and identity drives our choices and actions, creating a framework and biology of our beliefs and behaviors. This repairs genetic expressions and stops generational patterns of inherent limiting beliefs. When we are true to our values or change them, it will predict those truths or values that will serve us. The human race can thrive in any environment because our minds are primed for adaptation to all measurements and we can go through extensive mental and emotional changes if we learn to acquire the correct new skills. These have utility in all aspects at any given time that is bigger than ourselves. We are all capable of learning more, and this is an integral part of human evolution. It's evolving in our consciousness and in our adaptability. We're all designed for it. So see this as a learning curve to acquire new insights and a better framework of understanding how to build positive new neurobiology, rewiring your mind for success. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're able to get some more valuable insights and experiences or even experiential shifts that I was hoping for today. And we will look forward to seeing you on our final strategy.